Hi and welcome to our video on simple interest. Here, let's get started and by saying that what simple interest does is it adds interest to your principal balance year after year. What does that mean? Well, your principal is the initial amount that you invest, right? Maybe the initial amount that you borrow. It's your starting point. So it's your starting amount. That's what your principal is. And what the interest does in this case, the simple interest, it has some rate that's applied f by some frequency, like maybe every month or year or day or whatever. Um, but there's a rate that equals some percent that always is going to be applied back on the principal. And when you look at these things together, we can then calculate your interest. How do we do that? Well, let's say you've, you've borrowed, or you can say you invested 100. Let's be positive, right? Let's say you invested $100. This is your principal in this case. This is how much you put in to start. And you somehow found a wonderful interest rate of something nice, like 20%, right? So you're, you have a 20% rate. So let's say that that applies every year. You get 20% of simple interest. That means that you'll get 20% on your principal balance. So you'll have after one year, right, you'll have 100, your principal, we'll say P for principal, plus, well, R, that's your rate, which is 20% or, or 0.2 times, or 20% of your principal, right, your original amount. So in this case, it would be 100 plus 20, or $120. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're, you're calculating the sum of your principal and the rate times the principal. If you want to look at just the interest, you can just combine, well, what's the rate and the principal? That's the interest, this $20 right here. Altogether, this is the total amount you would have made after one year. But let's say you, you did this again, but you did it again for another year. So after two years, what will happen? Well, this is, this is where simple interest differs from com compound interest. What it will do now is, after two years, you'll add another 20% on the principal. So what will happen is, with a 20% rate, right, you'll have the $100, your principal, plus 20% of your principal, right, plus 20% of the principal again. So for two years, you apply the rate times the principal twice. This is the basic idea in simple interest. No matter how many years pass, we're going to add groups of right, 20% of the principal. You're going to add, in this case, two groups right, to get the total interest right here. And, and, and in fact, what's nice about this is we don't need to actually do this, right? Because could you imagine if you're trying to calculate for 100 years, how tedious it would be to write out piece by piece what the total amount of money is that you have made, or even piece by piece what the interest is. So fortunately, there's another way to break this down. But this is the building blocks. We'll try to remember what we did here. We took the principal and we added the rate times the principal to get the total amount of money that we made. That brings us to our next step. So what's really happening? Well, over time, and every investment's different, right? Let's say in years, you're making more money in this case, right? We're not owing more money, we're making more money. It could be that you're owing more money, but our example was that you invested money. So let's say you're gaining 20%, right? With simple interest, that means you're gaining 20% each year. So when you start, right? you have your principal investment. That's P, right? The principal investment. And we'll call this the, the money, right? And then after one year, well, we said you have your principal plus the rate times your principal. After two years, you have the principal plus the rate times the principal plus the rate times the principal. You do that twice. After three years, right, we have the principal and then the rate times the principal three times in a row. And you might see what's happening here. We have a little pattern. After four years, I'll show one more. You have principal plus rate times principal over and over again. 
And this time, you apply the rate times the principal four times. So what if I skip ahead to some, some number of years, any number of years? We'll say x. What would happen? After x years, you would have, well, you would have your principal plus, well, r times p, r times p, and so forth, x amount of times, right? I don't know how many years you have after the principal here, but this would be equal to x number of times, repeated over and over again. And the question becomes, how do we summarize what's happening? Well, this is, I guess, where we can generalize or, or create a, a general formula for finding how much money you've made here. Well, Notice that when there was one year, right, we applied the rate once and, and to the principal, and then there was two years, right, it was applied twice and so forth. And that's a good way of starting. That helps us realize that after x years, we'll multiply the rate by the principal x amount of times. So the question becomes, how can we simplify? And I'll start with this, this um, second equation right here. Here, notice that we have the principal twice. So we can factor that out. We can pull that out. And we get p times 1 plus r, right? Because here what's happening is that um, I, I pulled the p out. If you imagine how I would redistribute it, I would multiply p by 1 to get p, and then p times r to get p times r, or r times p. Basically, I'm pulling out the common factor. And I can do that again in the next step. Right, this time when I pull out p, I get 1 plus r plus r. And if I simplify this, I get p times 1 plus 2r. So notice, I know that there was combine the 2r's to get 2r. This time we had 3 p's in each term. We pulled it out and we got 1 plus r plus r, which simplified to 1 plus 2r. So I notice now that after two years, this number right here, the coefficient to on r, was 2. And that makes sense because we applied the rate twice. Here in the next one, we can pull the p out again, and we'll get 1 plus 3r for three years. And for four years, well, here we'll get p times 1 plus 4r. And then after x years, right, we'll have p times 1 plus xr. And this tells us how much, or this tells us the total amount of money we've accumulated over time. p times 1 plus xr, and all we're doing here is simplifying these expressions in the middle. What about the first term? Well, then we have p times 1 plus 0r, if you want to follow this formula, because what we're doing here, and, and this is just saying p, basically, is the same thing, because 0 times p is still 0. So this ends up just being the principal at the start, right, before you actually, before your interest actually starts accumulating. I think in general this formula is, is, kind, of, is kind of right here. The amount of money you'll be making is equal to the principal times 1 plus, well, your rate times the amount of time that's passing. Let's write that out. So, so the money you're making, or, or losing, it depends if you're owing money, or of course, it equals the principal times 1 plus, you can say time, but I'll write in x here because my t's look like plus signs. I don't want to confuse you, right? Times the rate. So we have rate. x will be equal to time. Right? This is just 1, and this is the principal. Now this is the total amount of money you're making. If you want to just look at the interest I, right, just the amount of interest, that would not include the original principal. It would just include the principal times the amount of time you're investing it times the rate. And if you're not clear on that, you can kind of simplify this formula or redistribute the principal, and you'll get P plus, right, P times 1 is P, plus P times X times R. I think it becomes a little bit more obvious, right? This total sum right here is all the money you'll make because it includes the principal and the rate times the principal x amount of 
times or x amount of years or cycles, right? Here, this is just that second part of the equation. This total amount of money is the principal plus the interest, right? Principal plus the interest. So if you're just concerned with the interest, just use the second part of this equation, right? Not the, not the principal or total amount of money you have, but just the accumulation of interest. And just to be clear, in case I'm, I'm not doing that, the time is not just how much time has passed, but, but how many cycles of the interest have passed. So an annual interest rate, you would look at how many years have passed. A daily interest rate, you would look at how many days have passed. And, and in this way, you're able to make simple predictions about simple interest. Anyway, um, this is just us getting started. I hope to really um, help you out and get you focused on all the possibilities with simple interest and compound interest up in our, in our next videos. Thanks a lot.